Today at shopdap.com, we're going to be talking about ignition coil connectors on two liter turbo engines. So we're under the hood of a two liter turbo. Now this is a TSI engine. This would be also applicable for an FSI engine as well as 2.55 cylinder engine. So we have our four ignition coils here and we have videos showing how to diagnose misfires. So if you have any issues around misfires that you're looking at, we have videos that we'll link to in the description about that. But we have our ignition coil connectors. These are commonly replaced whenever you're taking the coils off to change the coils or the spark plugs. They often are broken. Now on this vehicle, this one right here is broken. The others are okay. What generally happens is people push too hard trying to release them and then they snap the back of the connector off. The correct way to release an ignition coil connector is to push down on this tab and then you can lean forward towards the front of the vehicle and then slide it off like so. Now, that is the correct way to do it. You can see it here at click when you put it back on. When you have one that's broken off, you clearly have nothing to push on to that's going to allow you to release the tab that's underneath here. It goes straight underneath and just has a little thing that bites onto the coil. We'll show you some closer ups of them off the vehicle so you can get a better idea. Here's a harness off of a car. Here's the connector we're gonna be working with. So just to show you exactly what you're dealing with, when you push down on the tab right here, what you're releasing is this tab inside the connector right here. This lifts off of the ignition coil to allow it to slide off. So when, if you watch when I push down, it pulls that upwards. So when you're prying that thing off, what you're trying to do is get underneath here, get underneath this tab and then pull it up to allow you to slide it off. Okay, so when you have a broken tab at the back right here, you can do a couple things. You can either try to go in from the front here, which is, which is generally easier, or you can also go in from the back here and release this tab. So all you're trying to do is lift the tab from the coil over the clip on the, on the ignition coil itself. You're gonna get it in there and you kind of lift like this to get this in there. Now, you're gonna need something like a 90 degree pick to be able to do this, which is easier said than done. So we will have links to picks in the description, but also another way you can do it is going through the front. Now that I find this easier, but you can do more damage this way, is you can kind of get underneath here and then rotate it underneath. Now, you're, if you're replacing your ignition coil, it doesn't really matter if you break it doing this, and then you can just work it underneath and then slide this thing off. If you're unsuccessful in doing that, you actually can just cut this entire top portion out with dikes uh, if you're afraid you're gonna damage something or a razor blade or razor knife or something like that, which will allow you to release everything uh, a little bit easier. If you're gonna be replacing it anyway, you can just destroy that connector. Just make sure you don't damage anything else around it because that could actually destroy your coil. Okay, so the important thing to know is you will need to have all your other coils unplugged before you try to push this one off but we have them up and now we're gonna release this guy off. Other thing that's important to note when you're doing in the ignition coil connectors is this sheathing that you have to re remove to access all these wires. So all you're gonna do is there's release tabs at all these points and you're gonna get a pick or a screwdriver in there and you're gonna get it under there and just kind of pop it up. Now there's some here, there's some on the sides of the ignition coil connectors that you have to pop up and then everything should kind of split apart you know, like a clamshell and popping off on us. Now, if you manhandle this thing, you're going to destroy it. It isn't necessary, so you probably could get away without without uh, replacing this, but it does protect your wiring, uh, which is a nice thing to have. And now we've removed our coil harness cover and we can proceed with our wiring. Now, the connector that we have offered on our site, we offer them with this terminal tool. Uh, it is a pretty inexpensive terminal tool that we've included to make this a complete swap so you don't need any of the other special tools required for this job. The first thing we need to do when we're replacing this connector is remove this purple lock ring. So we're going to get a pick in here and I'm going to try to not block this shot as much as possible. And we're going to pop that out and then slide it out of place like so. Now we're going to put our terminal tool in here to release each wire. Now, before you do that, the important thing to note is the color of the wires you're actually dealing with. What I would suggest is take a picture of it beforehand before you release any of the wires so that you know exactly where they are. If you look, they're numbered one, two, three, and four right here. So you can take a picture, remember exactly where they go, or try to swap them one at a time to allow you to actually release them in order. So to release this, all you're gonna do is slide this terminal tool in and then you're gonna pull from the wire on the back. And it should pull out 
pretty easily. Now this one did. Now what you're releasing when you slide this on is right over top, you're releasing these tabs at the back of the terminal and then allowing it to slide over and release out of, out of that place. So what you may have to do is give it a little bit of a wiggle back and forth to get those tabs to release. Sometimes they're a little more stubborn than others and then pull it out of the connector. Now we're gonna swap over to our new one when we have our purple locking tab out and we're gonna slide this in. Now, the easy thing to do is you need to make sure you have the correct orientation of that to allow it to latch in place. And you should hear an audible click when they do lock in place like that. The important thing to note about orientation of wires, a lot of times people are confused as to how to insert these. So someone might try to insert it like this. Now, two things about that, the locking tabs are on this side, the flatter sides of this or the, the wider sides. So you won't be able to insert that and you definitely won't be able to latch it in. But if you look, you can see that all of the terminals go in horizontally here. So you're gonna have to have it in like this. Now, generally orientation of this doesn't matter whether you have it this, this way or this way, but the wire, especially on something that's got some age on it, is gonna be set in place in a certain way that you wanna make sure that you actually have it in the orientation that's most comfortable for the wire so you don't do any damage to it. So you should be able to just go like this, put it in the back, slide it in place, and click it in just like that. Once you've repeated that process and swapped all of your wires into your new connector, you put your locking tab back in place, and you should just be able to click that in. Now, if you have a problem with that latching in, it's probably because you have wires in the back that aren't latched in place all the way. You always wanna make sure you tug on the back of all the wires to make sure they don't pull out without any of the locking tab in, and then you've completed your install. Thank you so much for watching our ignition coil connector install. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more like it. Also, buy connectors from us. You should. We did this for you. You should.